Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel for what seems like a very long time since the last time I've done a tutorial. I know I've been away from YouTube for a while, I'm trying to get better at that. I say it every year, but I really, really, really am trying to do better. This video today is on, I don't think I've ever done a landscape editing tutorial and I thought this would be a great new comeback video to do since a lot of people have been asking about editing on my Instagram. So I'm gonna show you how to enhance a beautiful waterfall landscape image by using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. I don't like long intros, so let's just get right into today's tutorial. So this is the image that we're working with here. This was shot with the Sony a7R 3 and the Sony G Master 24-70 f2.8 lens. Um, I shot this about a couple of months ago, so it's a fairly recent image. And I just really love the edit that I did on this photo. So I wanted to actually walk through and show you guys my editing process for cr creating my landscape images like this waterfall. Now it's a little baby waterfall, but don't talk about me for that. <laughs> so what I like to do is I jump around a lot when I edit photos. So what I'm gonna do first is go to my, one of my preset tone curves. And this is what really makes or breaks photos in my opinion. The tone curve really controls a lot of the photo. So if you have my preset packs, that are available in my store. You'll see the link in the video and down in the, in the description where you can purchase these and they have um, all these different tone curves within different preset packs. So I'm gonna use my favorite one here, which is the Skyline Curve Strong, because I really wanna have some really intense contrast for this, this image. So we're gonna start there and then go back up to the top and we're just gonna go and adjust our white balance. So what I'm looking at at this photo, because it has already a warm feel, that's the direction we're gonna go for this particular photo. So we're gonna drag this over and warm this photo up quite a bit, because I really want that warm feel to really show in this, in this image. So we'll leave our tint where it is, that, that's okay. So we'll increase our exposure just ever so slightly. And then we're gonna dial down the contrast from here. So we'll go to about a negative 23, that looks good. And then I wanna bring down my highlights just a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to increase. So you kinda see some of these dark areas over here. We can't see any of that. So that's what I'm going to increase my shadows for. We're gonna go a bit extensive on this too. About 52%, 54%, that's okay. Now, the white level is, I, I want strictly for the waterfall back here. It's a little baby waterfall, but ain't nobody worried about that. But we wanna brighten that so you can really see it a lot more. And we're gonna emphasize that quite a bit. And it doesn't matter, I, I don't worry about clipping of my highlights and shadows like some people. I'm not that very picky about my, my pictures, but it all comes together once we start going through getting towards the end. Um, another thing that I'm gonna also adjust is my profile. So we're gonna go to Adobe Standard. Okay. And then we'll go back down here. Darken our blacks a little bit. Wanna add a little bit of clarity into our image. Run the dehaze a little bit. I really, this is a really useful tool. I really love the dehaze tool. Ever since, I think this came out with version six, I think, or was it seven? I'm not sure, but I really love that tool. And we won't adjust anything with our vibrance and saturation. So now we'll go back down to our tone curve. And all I wanna do is increase the shadows here as well. Go to about 85% there, and that, that's okay. We'll adjust these points here. 
down to 14 there. Increase that to 60 and that works and you can stay at 75, that works. Okay, this is where a lot of the image is gonna really change with our hue, saturation, and luminance. So what I want to do first is we want to adjust any of our red colors here. So we'll go a little bit down to 50 for any red colors we have. Go down a little bit in the orange. We'll take down our yellow a lot because we have a lot of yellow in the photo. So I'm gonna dial this down quite a bit to about 75 and see how that just drastically has changed our photo right there by itself. So and that's the direction that we really want to go. Also change the green, change the green colors. We, we want more of like a burnt color to really get that fall look, but don't wanna go too much to, to where they look completely dead. So I'll just go about 50 or so percent. That, that works really good. Um, don't have any aquas, don't really have any blue in there that we want to adjust. Uh, maybe go up on my magenta. And maybe a little bit in the purples, not really much of those there, but we'll do that. Okay, now for our saturation. Go up quite a bit on the saturation for the red. The green will go up about 30 or so percent really no aqua in here but go up a little bit on that and blue so if you look at the waterfall you see it has this blue tint we don't want that I love having the pure white um, kind of more white than having that bluish tone to my waterfall images so we're going to really dial out the saturation for the blue so if we take it all the way you see it, it completely removes that and so that's a real easy fix for if you have that blue uh, kind of color tint on your waterfall photos. Just take out the blue. Um, nine out of ten times that that works uh, for for those photos. So all, our purple will dial down a little bit, and we'll dial up the magenta. Okay, a luminance for any colors that we want to push a little bit. We'll push our blue. Now, even though we desaturated the blue, it still the data is still there so if we go all the way down you see we are now taking the luminance down out of that and then if we go up it really overexposes that so i want to push that just a little to get more of that water showing um, in our image our purple will dial down a little bit green we can emphasize a little bit more a little bit in our yellow and our orange We'll take that down just a bit, as well as our red. That works pretty good. All right, now for our split toning. This, we want a, so I wanna kind of make the highlights and the shadows have different kind of color effects to them. So the highlights I want to be more cooler than the rest of the photo. So we're going to take this down to about 240 and just add a little bit of saturation with that in there. All right, looks good. So next we're going to go down to our sharpening. Now I'm really extensive on my sharpening. Now if you look at the image already, it's a very, very sharp image, but I just like to add more sharpening to it. And that's when you already have good glass, it's not necessary, but I just really, really love adding more sharpness some people will say oh you shouldn't do that I don't care about other people's opinions and then we want to mask it now even though everything is in focus pretty much here I still only want to direct the focus to everything that is specifically sharp in the photo which in this case is probably going to be everything but we'll just up the masking a little bit noise reduction just a force of habit I just always go up a little bit on that and everything else we pretty much keep the same. Now we'll run our lens correction on this, which automatically comes up for our G Master lens. And then I like to take the vignetting all the way back to zero on this because I love adding, uh, I love the natural vignettes of lens, lenses. 
and I add that in post anyway, so I love keeping it there. So we will skip our transform and come down to the post crop vignetting. So we're gonna start it off so that way it highlights these other options down here. So we wanna take our midpoint and go all the way down to zero. And then we want to go halfway with our amount on that. And as you see, we're now getting that really dramatic feel to the photo once we do that. And what I also wanna do is we wanna feather it to kind of widen the, the effect a little bit. And then our roundness, we can increase that ever so slightly, okay? And so once we have that, we'll go back to the top and do our crop. We'll crop in a little bit because some of the, the scene, I don't really need all of this. Because if you look here to the top, there's kind of a little opening where you see the rock ending and we don't necessarily need that. So we'll just bring it in to kind of center this a little bit and kind of lose that part up there. That works. Let's slide it over a bit. And that's perfect. Looks really good. I think we got a nice image right there. And we'll just go up here and save this. Go to export. And I wanna save a TIFF file and we'll export this. So next we're gonna go into Photoshop and do our final adjustments. Okay, so now we pulled our, our image into Adobe Photoshop for our final touches that we're gonna do to the image. So what I'm gonna do first is, if you see this little opening, it kind of looks like the sun is peeking through. So I'm actually gonna emphasize that a little bit and we're gonna go to filter I'm gonna go to render and then add a lens flare to this. So we're gonna put that right in that opening there and we'll dial down the brightness a little bit, about 80%, that, that works pretty good. So we got it in the position that we want. So I'm just gonna do edit and undo this. We're gonna go to layer, a new fill layer, solid color, and then black. And once we go back to filter, since we've already that was the last thing we did. Do lens flare. Go back to filter and we're gonna use a Gaussian blur on that. Once we do that, we'll come over here to that layer and then just scream. And then change the opacity of that a bit. And there we go. And then we'll just flatten the image. So now we can start working on some other stuff that I might want to do to the photo. So I might wanna take my dodge tool here and maybe enhance a little bit of the shadows over here on the sides. So we'll change our, our brush over to our shadows, kind of come in here and just brush in a little bit. Okay, now I'll go to mid-tones and we'll just do it ever so slightly on that waterfall and the, the reflection we have here. Just brighten that ever so slightly. And that looks good. Next, we'll go up to image and do some final level and curve adjustments. So I have some already preset adjustments and we'll see which one I want to go with for these. It's a little bright. Go to number six. Yeah, I like number six. That works out very well. So next, we'll go to our curves and I might use two or three for this. See three, I think I'll stick with three. Okay, and that's that's all it is. So once we have our image, just go up here and save this. Save as a final JPEG. Do that there. And we'll do our max. And we're good to go. That is our final image of how to create a gorgeous looking waterfall landscape image. I hope this tutorial was very helpful for you. If you're interested in the presets that I have available for the images that you see that I share online daily, you can go to my store at professorhines.com forward slash store to download those. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.